Abortion is a very controversial topic, especially in developing countries. But women are always thinking about it. So what could be uh, the reason behind? The first reason is unplanned pregnancy. Many individuals may choose to take the abortion pill if they find themselves facing an unplanned or unintended pregnancy and wish to terminate it. Another reason is uh, medical reasons, of course. In certain cases, the health of the pregnant person or the fetus may be at risk and taking the abortion pill can be a recommended course of action to address these medical concerns. In addition, personal or financial considerations are also important factors, right? So the, the, the woman might feel that she doesn't have the ability to take care of the child, right? So this could influence the decision uh, to take a medical abortion route. And last but not least, reproductive choice. Some individuals may opt for the abortion pill uh, due to their personal beliefs about the reproductive autonomy and the right to make decisions regarding their own bodies and futures. But in this video, we're not going to talk about this. We're going to talk about the chemistry, the chemistry of the abortion pill, right? So usually it comes as a combination, combi pack. It's a combination of mifepristone and mesoprostol, right? So we're going to talk about uh, uh, these uh, drugs one by one, starting with mesoprostol, and we'll finish with uh, uh, mifepristone. We'll also uh, come up with something like a comparison so that you can see that how, how each drug works. Right. Okay, so let's uh, begin. Mesoprostol, this was discovered in 1973. It is a prostaglandin E1 analog, right? So if you know the naturally occurring uh, prostaglandin, this is just a modified version, right? So it's, it, it's, it's a slight structural modification will lead to uh, the following features which make the mesoprostol the best. It has increased undesecretory potency, increased the duration of action, because the half-life of naturally occurring prostaglandins is just uh, seconds. Improved oral bioavailability and improved safety profile. Mesoprostol was registered in 1986 for prevention and treatment of ulcers resulted from uh, non-steroidal and inflammatory uh, drugs like ibuprofen and aspirin. Right, so taking this would uh, uh, prevent and treat those ulcers, right? So there was an, an incidental uh, finding. It was actually a side effect. Those who were uh, pregnant, it would uh, induce abortion, right? So this is how it ended the uh, obstetrics uh, uh, field, right? So uh, in 1988, the FDA in US approved uh, this tablet for medical abortion. And in 1990, in UK, the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agent approved uh, this drug. Now, let's talk about its counterpart, Mifepristone. Mifepristone was developed by uh, Russell Uclaff. Uh, around uh, 1980, and it was uh, first put to the market in France in 1988. Right, so uh, the trade names uh, are RIU486, Mephigain, uh, Mephiprex. Right, so Mephipristone is an antiprogesterone. Antiprogesterone means it blocks the action of. Uh, progesterone, a naturally occurring or naturally produced hormone that prepares the inner lining of the uterus for implantation of a fertilized ovum and support of a growing embryo and placenta. This hormone 
maintains pregnancy, right? So, if you take mifepristone, uh, you have the opposite uh, effect, right? It's anti-progestion, right? So, what will happen is that uh, if the drug is taken orally in a prescribed dose uh, during the first seven to nine weeks of pregnancy and within two days, the uterine lining begins to deteriorate usually causing bleeding, which is similar to that uh, experienced during normal menstruation. Right, so let's uh, talk about these drugs in combination, making a comparison. Mesoprostol, also known as Cytotec, is a synthetic prostaglandin E1, prostaglandin E1 analog. And Mifepristone is a progesterone receptor antagonist. Mechanism of action. Cytotec works by increasing uterine contractions and causing cervical softening, leading to the expulsion of the pregnancy. It also helps to ripen the cervix before medical abortion. Mifepristone, on the other hand, binds to the progesterone receptor in the uterus, blocking the effects of progesterone. This leads to breakdown of the uterine lining and the detachment of the pregnancy, right? So this concept is known as destabilization of the implantation site. Indications. Mesoprostol is primarily used in combination with mefepristone for medical abortions during the first trimester. It can also be used for cervical ripening prior to surgical abortions or labor induction. Mifepristone is used in combination with mes uh, mesoprostol for medical abortions uh, up to 10 weeks of gestation. And it can also be used for the management of certain conditions like Cushing syndrome and for the induction of labor in some cases. Right, so you can see that the indications actually intermingle. Let's talk about the dosage. Right, so according to the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, this is how you give mifepristone and mesoprostol in a medical abortion. Right, so you start with mifepristone. The usual dosage of mifepristone is 200 milligrams taken orally. And this is typically administered in a clinical setting under the supervision of a healthcare professional. Right. After this, 24 to 48 hours later, some books say 12 hours later, you will give mesoprostol 400 micrograms you take this buccally, sublingually, or vaginally, right? So this can be administered even at home after receiving proper instructions and guidance from a healthcare provider. What side effects should you be worried about, right? So uh, with cytotec, cytotec usually causes abdominal pain, cramping, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, it may also cause fever, chills, headache, and vaginal bleeding. Mifepristone uh, causes uh, abdom abdominal pain as well, cramping, nausea, vomiting, and vaginal bleeding. It may also lead to dizziness, fatigue, and headache. Right, so as I said, mesoprostol is not only used in medical abortion. But it has other uses, as you can see uh, from this picture uh, with FIGO, right? FIGO is International Federation of uh, Gynecologists and Obstetricians, right? right. So uh, the use depends on the semester, right? Uh, on the trimester, not the semester, right? So first trimester, second and third trimester, right? So during the first trimester, cervical ripening, uh, pre-instrumentation, Right, so in this case, you take 400 micrograms pervaginally before the procedure. Right, so it's one use. Another use is uh, 
induction of abortion, induced abortion, right? So in this case, 800 micrograms are uh, provisionally 12 hourly, right? And then uh, in case of missed abortion, you take 800 micrograms provisionally uh, every three hours. Or you can take 600 micrograms sublingually. In case of incomplete abortion, you can take 600 uh, micrograms uh, per oral or uh, as a single dose. Right. So these are some of the uses or the indications during the first trimester. In the second trimester, induced abortion uh, or interruption of pregnancy, you can give 400 micrograms uh, per vaginally every three hours. In case of intrauterine fetal death, that's around 13 to 17 weeks, you can give 200 micrograms uh, provisionally every six hours. Uh, if this uh, if, if this intrauterine fetal death occurs uh, between 18 and 26 weeks, you reduce the dose, as you can see, 100 micrograms provisionally every six hours. During the third trimester, in case of intrauterine fetal death, that's 27 to 43 weeks, you reduce it again. So this is 25 to 50 micrograms provisionally, and you reduce the time every four hours. And this was every six hours, so this is every four hours. Induction of labor, right? You can use the same dose, 25 micrograms provisionally every four hours or 20 micrograms per oral every two hours or sublingually. Postpartum hemorrhage prophylaxis. You can uh, give 600 micrograms PO as a single dose, or but in treatment, it's same thing again. It's 600 micrograms PO, single dose. Right. So in conclusion, let's sum up how uh, this medical abortion occurs. Right. So as I said, uh, the first drug you give is mifepristone. All right. So this is what happens under normal circumstances. Right. So this is uh, your progesterone and this is your myometrium. Right. So. Uh, these are progester uh, progesterone receptors. So if the progesterone binds to progesterone receptors, there is a normal binding on it. And then it uh, follows the normal uh, pathway of maintaining the pregnancy. All right. But if you um, you give mifepristone, you have blocked the uh, progesterone receptor. Right. So that's the first appeal. You wait for 12, 12 hours, right? So 12 hours later, you give a mesoprostol. This will cause uh, uterine contraction and cervical dilation. And that's how you lose the pregnancy. Thank you so much. If you like this video, please make sure you subscribe. Uh, give it a thumbs up. And please share with your friends. Until next time.